For you youngins, you may not know who Ken Starr is. Ken Starr was named the Special Independent Counsel to investigate Whitewater. Whitewater was a real estate deal that the Clintons were involved in that supposedly garnered Hillary Clinton $100,000 off of an investment of $10,000. Can you imagine? Ten times her investment. This is back in the white. This is pre-dot-com. Like where, you know, you don't have like guys like um, whatever, Tim Ferriss and Mark Andreessen walking around like, oh, we only involve, uh, I heard like that startup uh, podcast and like they're meeting with people like, oh yeah, I only do, uh, I only do 100x investments. <laughs> we only, only do investments where we get 100 times return. That's the only kind that I invest in. That's we only everything. do 100 x. Yeah. We don't put up any collateral. We do. It's basically, we do. it's a fraud. 10x. We do 10x and then right. everybody gets wiped out. Right. Well, so they started to investigate that. They found nothing. But once you appoint this uh, special independent prosecutor, there was no way to disappoint him, as it were. <laughs> and he started to investigate everything that had gate on the end of it. Travel gate. Vince Foster gate. Um, well, that's the thing, is that what would happen is Rush Limbaugh would add gate to something. And then Ken Starr would investigate it. Investigate it. Until finally, Lucianne Goldberg came to him and said, what about intern gate or former intern gate? And he said, what? And he said, look, she said, I will get my friend Linda Tripp to wear a wire and to record her phone conversations with this girl named Monica Lewinsky, woman, who is having an affair with Bill Clinton. And you'll get him. How would I get him? You'll get him lying about it. So when you depose him, investigating one of the other 30 gates, you'll ask the question, have you ever had sex with either Monica Linsky or any other woman who's not your wife? And he'll say something funny like, what, it depends on what your definition of, of, of is is. Brilliant. Is you having sex or something? That was amazing. I don't know what it was. <laughs> and oh, that was so impressive. Ken Starr, uh, of course, has since uh, recounted said, "I think Bill Clinton's probably a pretty good guy." Well, uh, Ken Starr, um, after he brought about the uh, the impeachment non-conviction of Bill Clinton, probably in many respects uh, led to, um, I think, a, a lot of horridness following that. Um, not the least of which, uh, 60% approval ratings for Bill Clinton when he left office. But he has gone on to be a, um, a president of Baylor University, wherein there have been some uh, rape accusations. And Ken Starr did not respond to them. I guess he got a little bit less sensitive to sex afterwards and forced uh, molestation and uh, abuse and rape. Must have been. He's got other things to do. And here he is, not under oath, telling a reporter from KWTX something and then finding out that uh, he didn't say it right. So uh, he took a couple other swings at the, uh, at the ball, as it were. It's this email sent from a rape victim to a number of people with the subject line, I was raped at Baylor, that's been part of the debate during the sexual assault investigation. The victim, whose identity was concealed, appeared on ESPN's Outside the Lines on Wednesday. She sent the email in the fall of 2015 about a rape that happened in 2009. A few hours after that interview aired, we met with Starr at the president's home on the Baylor campus. One of our questions was about that email. What about um, the victim that came forward saying that she had personally sent you an email and Art Riles an email? saying in the subject line that she was raped at Baylor. Did you ever see that email? I honestly may have. I'm not denying that I saw it. But it's what happens moments later that brings the interview to a halt. What you can't see during this interview is my news director behind me, 
You also can't see a woman named Mary Spate, who asked my boss to promise not to use that portion of the interview. When he says no, she interrupts our interview. Well, I want to point out, I, I need to talk to Jen Stark. To just start. Okay. Okay. I need to talk to you, sir. Okay. Do you ask great questions? Okay, great. Can I ask you one more question? I have I got to talk to you. Okay. Okay. Spade was introduced <laughs> to the crew as a... <laughs> Man. Are, are they sure that she's just a friend or a uh, crisis advisor? Because they, they talk to each other like they're married. Oh, you ask great questions. I have to say, can I talk to you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Good. Okay. I need to talk to you, sir. Okay. Do you ask great questions? Okay, great. Can I ask you one more question? I have got to talk to you. Okay. Okay. Spate was introduced to our crew as a longtime family friend. What we've since learned is she has a long resume in crisis management. She's a communication specialist, owns her own firm, and was once a director of media relations at the White House for President Reagan. She also coached Starr while he gave testimony to impeach Bill Clinton. Hmm. After a few minutes away, the two returned. She needs to ask you that question again. Whether you do it on camera or not, it's up to you. I just want to make sure it doesn't end up misedited. Okay. We pause ask it, pause it, pause it. So that is, there you have the, him being admonished in the hallway by his crisis management good friend uh, who says, you need to answer that question again on camera. Just do it again. Do that question again. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is up for his second swing. I'm sure it doesn't the, uh, end up misedited. Okay. We ask a star again, and he answers, but turns to Spate apparently for coaching. All I'm going to say is I, I honestly have no recollection of that. Of seeing any email? Is that okay? Well, look at me. Look at her. Then start. Strike is two, ladies and gentlemen. Strike okay. two. There he is. He asks the question and doesn't even give uh, room for editing <laughs> as he turns to his crisis manager. It's a, is that okay? I mean, it's almost one word. Like, I, I have no recollection of seeing the email. Is that okay? <laughs> Here we go. Answers again. I honestly have no recollection of seeing such an email, and I believe that I would remember seeing such an email. The President University gets lots of emails. I don't even see a lot of the emails that come into the office of the President. I have no recollection of it. None. While Starr calls for transparency and openness, it appears his message is still being tightly controlled. Third time's a charm, ladies and gentlemen. Third time is a charm. Yes, he is the Mr. Rogers of rape cover-ups. Is that okay? Did I? Man. Ooh, really? Gee, gonna put really? that in the spam box. That's another woman that got assaulted by the old football right. team. Right. Ooh, don't want to see that there. Really hard to imagine this guy's not on top of things. Unbelievable. And by the way, does every single thing that's bad go back to Reagan? Uh, Even this amazing. random woman who's right. a crisis manager for him. It's like, got her start under Reagan. <laughs> a rod, Reagan. What the amazing Mujahideen, thing is. The Baylor crisis communications lady with Ken Starr. What is her experience with the media that she seems like my crisis management is such that I can walk him back in, say to the media, ask him the question again. I don't care if you record it or not. I want the question asked again. Like, I can't tell if she's like saying like, I'm going to train you how to answer a question. I don't care if it embarrasses the hell out of you. Or if she actually thinks, or it's been her experience that the media just like goes along with this stuff and they allow a take three, a more nuanced, uh, uh, and, and, I mean, good for good for this news outfit that basically said, like, look at this shit show we saw. <laughs> well, I, I was yeah, I was gonna make the joke that she's like does diversionary crisis communications where she creates events that are worse than the initial. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but but I think the bigger that's a very legitimate thing. I mean, you see that with with I mean, this is on a different scale. But how many reporters have said I can't take Trump on the way that local radio guy did because I need to see him I every need day. Need access, right? So if she's dealing with people who aren't going to be hung out to dry by their institutions already, 
Maybe she gets to do those ta- do overs. Or she's actually working for the television station. This is your friend, Mr. Star. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It is? Oh, okay. Hi, I don't remember you. I love friends. <laughs> I, I like impeaching presidents over blowjobs, friends, and I rape cover-ups. I've read that section of my report 5,000 times. <laughs> All in the shower. <laughs> it's a very soggy report. Let's go to the phones. Hello, you. I'm Sam Cedar. Looking for smart, progressive talk that is occasionally amusing? Well, subscribe to our YouTube feed. Subscribe to our podcast. Like us on Facebook. And just generally enjoy us.